All right, so in this video, we're going to begin talking about the subject of anatomy. This is a broad topic, and so we'll just begin very broadly, and then we'll go down to a few more specific things, but most of those specifics will be broken down as we go through the class. So what is anatomy? Anatomy is the study of the structure of body parts and their relationships to one another. This shows some of the early anatomical drawings as to what people thought we were made of. And I'm not really going, sure what's going on with the weapons and things, but, you know, there was a lot of war and that's kind of how they, they started to ask questions, actually, it was because of battles. They would see the insides of people and they would wonder what was going on. And so it brings us to a couple of divisions in anatomy. There's gross anatomy, and we typically, when we hear this word gross, we think like disgusting, but gross just means large enough to be seen with a naked eye. And so this is like your arm or your leg, or, you know, you can go on. There's, in gross anatomy, there's still, there's regional anatomy, meaning talking about specific regions of the body, like, you know, the upper body, lower body. The hands even could be a region, so you get the idea. And then there's the term systemic, which you may be familiar with. Anytime you hear that term systemic, it is talking about the whole body of whatever it is. So in this case, it would be a systemic thing would be the, applying to the whole body. And then there's mic microscopic anatomy, and this is uh, so small that it requires uh, tools to see, like a microscope. And this is when you can get into other topics like cytology and histology. Cytology has to do with the study of cells. Histology with the study of tissues. And then there's developmental anatomy. And so as we study the human body, we're going to learn that as we develop, our bodies change, which you're already familiar with, of course. And this developmental anatomy is a study of those changes that occur to structures over the course of a lifetime. You are not done developing, even though you are adults in, in one sense or another, you're still developing. We age, our bodies change even as we age. And so it's important to understand those changes. Another branch that we'll be looking at in this class is called physiology. Now, physiology and anatomy go hand in hand. Physi whereas anatomy is the study of the structures themselves, physiology is a study of how those structures function. And so physiology deals with a function. This focuses usually on at the cellular level of things, uh, even the molecular level, as we get really deep into some of the chemistry, which we will talk about. And again, this has to do with specific organ functions, how systems function together in general. And so these two subjects, anatomy and physiology, go hand in hand. We will also spend some time talking about the idea of structure and function and how those two things are related. The structure of an object typically denotes its function, meaning that you don't, you know, when there, you, we understand this inherently, I think. If you think about like garden tools, you kind of, just by looking at it, you can kind of get an idea of what it's used for. And so the same thing goes in our bodies as well. They are, the structure and the function of an object are typically related to one another. This goes through from cells up to the largest parts of our body. This has to do with uh, the, the principle of complementary complementarity, there's a fun word for you, the principle of complementarity of structure and function. Think of the shape of your teeth. Your teeth have specific functions. And think of the structures of you know teeth and other animals in particular. We're not talking about animals in this class, but if you look at a cow's mouth versus a lion's mouth, there are different kinds of teeth because they're not eating the same things. I think we all understand this. Now, here's something you've had since you were we lads and lasses. Uh, the levels of organization in the human body starts at the molecular level, so which is even to the left of cells. And then, so we will talk about things at that level. But then we'll be talking a lot about cells and tissues. Cells make up tissues. Tissues make up organs. You 
you've had this. So I'm going to move on. All right. And then we will be looking at these systems of the body. There are 12 different systems that we will spend time on in this class. And so we're going to start with the skin, muscles, bones. We're going to spend quite a bit of time on the nervous system. It's very important. Uh, the endocrine system this has to do with like glands and hormones, another very important part of our bodies. Uh, the cardiovascular system, which has to do with our hearts and blood vessels. The lymphatic system, one of the lesser known groups. And it is going to be, it talks about lymph vessels and nodes, recirculates blood. We'll talk more about that again. The immune system, the respiratory system, digestion, excretory system, which has to do with your kidneys and removing metabolic rate uh, waste. And then, of course, the reproductive system. Next, let's look at this idea of the requirements of life. There are certain requirements that are necessary for all living things. What this means is that for an organism to maintain life, they have to have these things for them. One of those things is maintaining boundaries. So the first thing is maintaining boundaries. There has to be a division between the internal body and the external. This, for us, it's our, it's our skin. Obviously, uh, you may hear me refer to animals quite a bit because I like the subject, so, but this is a human anatomy class. But you get the idea, you know, when you look at the animal kingdom, you see this in different ways as well. But this maintaining boundaries is very important. If this is ever breached, if there's no way to separate the outside from the inside, say with an injury or something like that, then that can cause life to be in danger. Next is movement. Traveling through an environment and then moving materials around in your environment is necessary for life, particularly for animal life. Next is the concept of irritability. This is the one on the left. Now, we typically think, like, I'm irritated with someone. Well, why are you irritated? Because they have stimulated you to a particular a particular way, and it's caused you to react in a certain way. Irritability is just that. It is when we are stimulated, we are able then to respond, you know, like touching a hot pan, you respond. That is the concept of irritability. This is necessary for life. If you didn't know that your hand was on a hot pan, eventually you would lose the use of your hand. And so this is important for us. Next is metabolism. You see the little girl eating the fruit. This uh, metabolism is a really big word. Uh, it has to do with all the chemical reactions that are going on in our bodies. We typically think of eating, but it not only has to do with uh, breaking down food, but it has to do with building up structures in our bodies as well. And there's excretion, which is on the left. This is linked to metabolism because metabolism causes some waste products. Not all pro processes in the body are completely self reliant or that meaning that they don't just turn on themselves. They always produced some kind of waste that is not good for the body. And so the body needs to figure out how to get rid of that. Ex the excretion process is always figuring out how to get rid of ammonia, which we will talk more about that when we get to that portion of the class. The next thing is growth and development. And so you see here with the picture on the right, growth having to do with just gaining size and then development having to do with actually changing form. And so those two things are closely related to one another. And then uh, lastly is reproduction, just reproducing. This is unnecessary for life, obviously, because uh, you would not be here were it not for reproduction and future generations would not be here were it not for reproduction. And so it, does, it is a requirement for the survival of a species. And so that is things that are necessary for life, meaning for life to continue to happen or for one, for an individual to be, to be alive. Next are the requirements for survival, meaning in order to survive, you have to have these basic needs. And I think we understand this. We have to have nutrients, and hence the water drop and the apple. We have to have 
some sort of covering to protect our bodies. And a lot of that has to do with our body temperatures, which is what you said the little fire is for maintaining body temperature, maintaining, uh, again, that barrier between us and the outside world. And one thing that is important that I don't think I have a picture for, I don't, is the concept of atmospheric pressure. If there was not a particular pressure in the atmosphere, our lungs would not be able to exchange CO2 and oxygen, thus rendering us lifeless. And so the fact that there is a particular pressure in the atmosphere, this allows us to breathe and get oxygen. And so these things are necessary for survival. If any of them are changed in any way, then survival can, there can be a problem with that.